fun food today. I'm gonna be sharing my onstage makeup routine. So this is what I do every night before the show. I take it from this to this. So I gotta warn you, I'm not a makeup expert by any means. I'm not one of those girls who spends hours on YouTube learning how to do all these fancy beauty tricks. I don't wear a lot of makeup in my everyday life, but for most of you, you probably don't know that this is what my makeup free face looks like. And if you're a guy watching this and you're surprised, I do want to let you know that this is kind of what all girls look like without makeup. All of us look pretty just kind of like plain, I would say. And makeup elevates everything to the next level. And unfortunately, that's just kind of the way that Western beauty works. There's a really crazy, out of control, high standard. And as women, a lot of times we kind of have to play into that game if we want to be on the same playing field as all the other women playing the game. So I don't really, support the idea of wearing makeup. I think it kind of goes against uh, a lot of my values, which is like show up as you are, be authentic. But I know that I am really reading into it very heavily if I go down that mindset. So I have let my brain go down that mental rabbit trail before and thought maybe I should be, you know, the next Alicia Keys that just decides to start wearing makeup, but I'm not there yet. I'm gonna keep wearing makeup because you know, I enjoy it. it. It's fun for me, it's like a hobby and it's just something that I enjoy. Like I enjoy giving myself that time every morning, putting a little love onto my face and also for stage, it's another way to express yourself because wearing makeup, what you're doing is you are accentuating certain things about your face and you're helping the audience see those parts of your face better. So for example, you probably can't really see much of my eyebrows right now because they don't naturally pop out of my face. But when I darken them, all of a sudden you're gonna be able to see the expression of my eyebrows on stage better than you could if I didn't have makeup. Same thing for all my eye movements, my lips, everything like that. By putting makeup on, you're making every little feature pop a little bit more, and that actually does help with self-expression. So I appreciate that about makeup. So I know that was a whole big rant. I wasn't planning on doing that. But let's just jump right in. I'm gonna show you what I do to get ready for an Icon for Hire show. So first thing I always do is put on sunscreen every single day. This is Studio 35, which I think is a Walgreens off-brand. I've already slathered that on because I knew the next step I wanted to do was Prime. I generally buy drugstore stuff, not MAC stuff, but um, they were kind enough to send me a lot of good stuff a while back, so I've been enjoying using that. Okay, so I just throw that all over my face and let it dry for a second. And what primer is gonna do is just make the makeup stick to my face better. It's kind of like the glue that's gonna make the whole thing run and it's gonna make it last a lot longer. So rock and roll shows are really sweaty and everything's just gonna kind of sweat off or drip off or just kind of move and rearrange if you don't use the primer. So when you really need your makeup to last for hours, you probably don't wanna skip that. Next, I'm gonna go in with some concealer. This is Lorac Perfection Concealer. I will list everything in the description because I don't really wanna take it every time and tell you exactly what everything is, but I'm just gonna throw this in under my eyes here. You know, the, the drill, you usually go in an upside down triangle shape, kind of like that. And I'm just trying to kind of brighten up under my eyes, get rid of those dark circles, especially when I'm on the road and I am not sleeping, those get pretty intense. I'm gonna cover up any kind of blemishes like that. Okay, so I just kind of throw it on like that and then I will blend it out. This is a Bare Minerals Precision Face. I feel like I'm doing an infomercial, um, but I'm just blending everything like this. And I'm gonna come in with my foundation. Now, for stage makeup, I would actually recommend that you probably use a liquid foundation because it is stronger. However, liquid foundation, I just haven't figured out how to make it look natural on my skin. It always looks like I'm wearing a ton of makeup and it drives me crazy. So instead, I love to use a mineral-based powder. This is Mineral Power by Maybelline. Um, and it's actually in pure beige, which is a little dark, I think, for my skin, especially in wintertime when I'm a little bit pale. But just throw a little in the, the lid like that, swirl it around. And like I said, the coverage on this is not super strong, but I don't mind. I feel like I would rather have a little bit of realness showing through, a little bit of blemishes showing through, instead of making it look like I'm wearing like a giant layer of foundation. So this is just what I prefer right now, but if I can find a liquid one that covers and looks natural, leave me comments, ladies, if you know of the one, um, that would be ideal. Okay, next I'm gonna try to get rid of the blemishes more. So this is, I don't even know how to say this. This is this. <laughs> um, it's like a contouring and highlighting, uh, what's it called, palette? See, oh my God, you guys, I don't even know what these things are called palette and I'm just gonna come in with this kind of skin tone one and this one is gonna uh, just magically make blemishes disappear just like that next we're gonna go on to my favorite part and that's eyebrows it's not my favorite because I like to do it but it's my favorite thing to have finished on my face so 
generally every day I will at least do a light cover of this mineral foundation and eyebrows and that's that's my bare minimum I hate going like I don't even like looking in the mirror when my eyebrows are done. It just, it's a, it's like a pet peeve more than anything. You know what I'm saying? So what I have here is just a brown eyeshadow, but this is what I found works best for me. This is a brush. You can tell I broke it on tour. I break a lot of my stuff on tour. Um, and I just used some gaff tape for stage and just taped it back together. This is a really thin brush, but what I did is I actually cut it down and made it even thinner because I wanted it to be like really precise. And then I always use water. I take the brush and I kind of just work the water into the powder and then I will just draw. So the way that I like to do this is to draw one line on the bottom, then one line on the top and then fill it in. So here we go. And now that I've got the outline down, I'll just kind of fill it in from here. Listen to your mother when she tells you you ain't pretty, you don't look more like the others. I'm generally not super patient with my makeup routine. After about 10 minutes, I start losing steam and I'm like, oh my God, Ariel, let's wrap this up. So, um, moving on, we're gonna do eyes next. I'm going to prime them with MAC Prep and Prime 24 Hour Extend Eye Base. I refuse, 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 refuse to put on eyeshadow without an eye primer. It is a complete waste of my time because it will not stay, it will crease and get all weird like right away. So I know that if I'm gonna put the time to artfully make my eyes look crazy, then I might as well put the glue on first to make it stick. Fun story, when I was in college for the one year that I went, one of my crazy roommates uh, used to, she wore a lot of makeup and she used to call it painting the barn. <laughs> So that's what I call it. So on the way to show, whenever I'm in the van, I'm like, okay guys, time to paint the barn now. And I do a lot of my makeup in the van, which is awkward, but it's like, I'm pretty good now at like maneuvering through the potholes and being in a moving vehicle and having like a pretty steady hand. It's a life skill. Okay, so now I'm gonna do my eyes. I really enjoyed using this palette on the last tour. This is the rock. But what this is really nice is it's got the light to the dark here and light to the dark here. And this is like what they would say is the daytime look and this is the nighttime look. I just kind of combine based on my mood because I'm inconsistent and uh, just want to be unique and not follow directions. But this has pretty crazy fallout and I know that I'm supposed to do, you're supposed to do your eyes first instead of your face. When, you, when you're working with eyeshadow that has fallout, for guys who don't know, fallout just means that the little trickles of eyeshadow just like fall all over your face, which is so fun. It's not, because what it does is it ruins all your hard work here, but um, I will hope for the best. I'll just start out with a light color, going with the linen right here, and I'll just kind of like do the whole lid like this, especially making sure I get the inner corner, because the beauty experts tell you to do light in the inner corner. Guys, if you're watching this, I'm really proud of you for making it this far and not tuning this out, and I hope you have a new appreciation for what your girlfriend does every day. It's crazy. Guys, can you imagine if you had to do this? I'm like a little, I have like a little bit of a, um, a problem with the fact that only chicks have to do this stuff to keep up and guys can just like roll out of bed and shape it and call it a day. What I love is that there's now a lot of guys on YouTube that are wearing a ton of makeup and doing beauty tutorials and I think that's just so cool to see a dude's face transform and look super beautiful. Okay, so that's my light base and I'm gonna go to the second light color here and I'm just gonna go um, up to the crease, okay? So that's how I start off. And then I'm gonna take this brush. This is uh, tapered a little bit and it's gonna um, do, do the crease. I have to wet it as well, otherwise I will get stuff everywhere. Next, I'm just gonna go down the line today. I am gonna be consistent. Um, I'm using burgundy. I'm gonna put this in my crease and here's usually <laughs> where all the fallout happens. So we'll find out together. And I know it's kind of messy right now, but I always go through and blend it so I don't mind that. Next, I'm gonna take this brush. This is my favorite, I love this one. This is Fair Minerals Precision Eye. I love this brush because the bristles are densely packed, they're tapered at the end, and it's a perfect way to really get in and define the crease. So I've got it wet, and I'm gonna go in with this black. It's called Jet Black, which I love. And I'm just gonna do it kinda on the outer, just like that. Maybe connect it to the edge there. I'm gonna go in and blend it with this guy again, and this is a new one. It's also Mary Kay, and I think it's called a blending brush. So next I'm gonna take this brush by Barbie and use it as kind of an eyeliner brush so I'll get it nice and wet and just come in here with the jet black again and just kind of line the top and that's really just gonna be uh, setting a foundation for the false eyelashes so they blend in a little bit better.
All right, and I did notice I was getting a lot of that fallout we talked about, so I just went and wiped that off. So now I'm gonna just come in and add some of these lighter colors under my eyes. So I think I kind of wiped my makeup off, which is why they tell you to do your foundation after your eyes, but I like to go in order of most importance in case I get interrupted and I just like, what if they move the show up and I have to go on stage earlier than I thought and it's like, what if I just have my eyes done and I, like I would rather have my foundation done and then my eyes, you know what I'm saying? So I like to work in a logical order. So speaking of logical, if we were gonna stay on the eyes next, I would do the false lashes, but they're the worst thing in the whole world and so I like to do those dead last. So we're gonna keep going with the other stuff. Next, I'm gonna contour my cheekbones. This is Tapered Brush by Bare Minerals and I'm gonna go in at the darkest color. I really do like this brush for contouring. So for contouring, I'm gonna go from about here to about here and I'm gonna suck in my cheeks when I do it. So here we go. Fun thing about stage is you can go pretty crazy with this. And we just released an album where my cheeks are like super contoured, so I've been going a little overboard for shows lately, which I like. I do that and then I come in and kind of lighten this part up as like a contrast. So this is darker, this is lighter, and I just kind of like do one of those. Okay, next is blush. I ran out of blush about nine months ago and I have yet to buy any. So what I started doing on tour was just using the pink lipstick trick instead. So I would just go like this, apples, just like that. And then you blend it and then you have magical on the road blush when you're too busy or too lazy to buy actual blush. Just like that. Okay, so now it's time to move on to lips. I find that I need a lipstick that's gonna last for a really long time. And I need it to be like a liquid one instead of a cream one. If I were to put something like this on my lips, you saw how easily I was able to blend it. Having the mic so close to my lips means that by the end of the show, I'll just have lipstick blended all over my mouth, which is not cute. So instead you wanna go with something that's like a liquid that's gonna dry. And this is Oh Put It On by NYX Liquid Suede. And I really like this one. It stays where you put it. But that's the thing, it stays where you put it. So if you put it in the wrong place, you're kind of screwed and you have to kind of start over. So that's why I like to help put it on and really line it with um, this Barbie really nice precise brush. So that's what I'll be doing. I'll just kind of get started on the inside and then line it with the brush. using this Neutrogena Makeup Remover Wipe. Just trying to put it all in the right place, it's so hard, but it's gonna be worth it. Okay, so the next thing I do is apply false eyelashes, which I just did. So I'll show you the brand I've been using. It is this, it is from eBay. You can get like 20 of these for like $5, super cheap. You can reuse false eyelashes, which is nice, um, but when you get them so cheap, it's like you don't really have to. I just put these on with the Duo Eyelash Adhesive in black. And it's really nice to have a black glue, I find, instead of a clear glue because the clear doesn't actually dry clear, it kind of dries white. Basically, false eyelashes are one of those things that just make your eyes pop a little more and accentuate. Your normal lashes are about like this, and false eyelashes, as you can see, are huge. So they do help you have that more expressive, animated face on stage. And I used to be really scared of wearing them because I figured, like, what if when I'm headbanging, it'll just, like, sweat off? Or, like, what if it ends up on the side of my face? but that has never happened yet. So if that were to happen, I think I would just rip them off, mid set, hand them to a fan. It'd be like a fun moment, right? So once I've got the lashes on, the very last step, oh my God, we're almost done, is a setting spray. This is Photo Finish Primer Water by Smashbox. I can just spray this all over my face. Feels amazing, but it tastes disgusting. Oh, but if we are gonna be playing something like a festival or an outdoor show, any Florida show in the summer, I will use hairspray for a setting spray because that is by far stronger than an everyday setting spray, something like this. So after this, I will generally do my hair and then walk on stage and sing my little heart out and have a great time. So I hope you enjoyed going through my onstage makeup routine. Before we go, we gotta give a shout out to Supporter of the Week, woo! You're clapping at home, right? Clap, woo! Today's Supporter of the Week is Daryl Cannon. Thank you so much, Daryl. 
Daryl's one of the awesome people who supports The Ariel Show. If you're watching the show and you're not supporting it on Patreon, the only way the show exists is because people like Daryl make it happen. So maybe leave a comment for them thanking them and letting them know how much you love them, and maybe consider joining the cult. Basically, depending on what tier you come in at, my patrons get The Ariel Show a full day early. So everyone else gets to watch it on Friday, but my patrons get it on Thursday. So check out the link in the description below and see if you want to join it up. Thanks for watching. Click here to subscribe. I love you as always. I'll see you next time.